Okay guys, so in this lecture we are going to explore uh, the use of mental ray with uh, final gather and global illumination uh, in conjunction with a mental ray uh, daylight system uh, as well as using 3ds max uh, photometric lights uh, for interior lighting effects such as uh, artificial lights, uh, incandescent lights, fluorescent lights uh, halogen lamps, uh, what have you. Um, so basically the way this is going to go is you need to set up a scene. Uh, we just need a basic box, so I'm going to make one here. So I'm going to go to create a standard primitives box. Clicking on the origin, I'm going to hold down my control key and I'm going to make my box about the same size as the perspective grid. And then I'm going to go ahead and increase the uh, number of segments on my box to, let's just say, 10 by 10 by 10. And then I'm going to convert it to an editable poly. And then I'm going to go into polygon mode. I'm going to turn off uh, ignore back facing and I'm just going to select bunch of polygons here to cut out kind of like a bay window in my box and then I'm going to say delete and then I'm going to create a standard primitive uh, let's just do a little sphere here and put it in my inside my room like so and then I'm going to select that uh, box I just made with the window cut out. And I'm going to go into the modifier and hit S for shell. And I'm going to add a shell modifier. Scrolling down, there it is, the shell modifier. And I'm going to uh, give it an outer amount of, say, like a 10. Uh, maybe not that much be like a five or something okay and I'm basically set up now I can hit the Z key to get inside of my box and I'm going to actually delete this one because I already made a little bit more uh, detailed one so I'm going to delete this and then say unhide all and I've already made a little uh, living room scene here that I'm going to use instead. So my living room scene basically has the exact same cutout as the box I just made except for this one is uh, populated with uh, some uh, pot lights there in the ceiling and then uh, also some some bookshelves over here with a little mirror. Uh, we got a couple wall sconces over here, a couch, uh, a coffee table, and of course our little teapot and uh, the reason I did this is because um, I wanted to uh, I wanted to show you guys how to set up a little environment that you could use if you didn't have a living room scene like this one to follow along with but uh, uh, so basically you just need a box with a cutout and then something inside of here like a sphere uh, I'm gonna use this uh, living room scene though because it's gonna show things off a little bit better alright so uh, the first thing I want to do is, if you'll notice, I'm kind of having trouble navigating my scene. My camera keeps flying outside of the walls. And the reason for that is because the field of view on this camera uh, is basically not wide enough angle of a lens. And so um, it's kind of uh, it needs to be a wide ang wider angle lens for me to fit inside of this room and photograph it correctly. So I'm going to change that by clicking on this little plus icon right here in the viewport and I'm going to say configure viewports and what I want to do is right here under perspective user view I want to change the field of view from 75 to I'm sorry from 45 which is the default to something higher like a 75 um, which in max is going to give it the effect of having a wider angle uh, lens and it's going to allow me to basically um, have a full 360 view of my room uh, from any angle. Okay, so I'm going to pick my camera angle here. Just want to get something where I can kind of 
see some of these pot lights. Uh, I want to be able to see the bookshelf over here, and then I want to be able to see my window. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do to set my scene up uh, with Final Gather Global Illumination using a Mental Ray with a uh, Mental Ray Daylight System and Mental Ray uh, Sun and Mental Ray Sky is I need to pop out here to I'm just going to use the top uh, orthographic viewport I'm going to go into the create tab and then at the very very right I'm going to go into systems and then I'm going to select daylight and I'm just going to go ahead and click right here in my top ortho and if you'll notice here I'm creating a daylight system I'm going to right click to get out of daylight creation mode and you'll probably notice uh, now if you're doing this along with me that you can't move this light right I'm trying to move it and I cannot move it and that's because if you watched the previous video we actually have to go into the modifier tab and select the position of this light and change it to manual and if we do that then we'll be able to uh, move this light around so I'm going to grab my light here and I'm going to move it around a little bit, give it a lower angle. I'm going to make sure I go over here to my perspective viewport. And I'm going to make sure that I have realistic turned on. And now I'm going to turn off the edge faces. And so this is going to allow me to basically be able to see my uh, real time lighting interactively so I can kind of place my shadows if I wanted the shadows to trace this way. Uh, I just want the sun to kind of maybe come in here at a slight angle and maybe trace all the way across the room. Maybe it's kind of kind of late in the day. And then what I'm going to do here is I need to make sure that my renderer is set to mental ray. So I'm going to open up the render setup and I'm going to go into the common tab. I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom to the assign renderer tab and I want to make sure that right here under production my renderer, my renderer is actually NVIDIA Mental Ray so I'm going to click on that and make sure that's NVIDIA Mental Ray and then the next thing I want to do is I want to select my sunlight or my daylight system and I'm going to go to the modifier tab and under the sunlight tab I want to change it from standard to MR Sun and you can see here immediately when I did that my room got a little bit brighter here in my my uh, render preview viewport and then I also want to change the skylight from the default which is skylight to MR sky and when I do that my scene is going to be get a little bit brighter even still and then now would be a great time for me to just go ahead and do a little preview render of my scene. I kind of have my setting set a little high here so it's probably going to take a little while okay so uh, we got our um, daylight system set up with uh, mental ray and we have a mental ray uh, sun and a mental ray sky node attached to the daylight system I'm going to go ahead and render uh, an image out and you can see here we've got uh, the sunlight coming in you can kind of see the room is being lit a little bit and you can almost see uh, kind of like a background like an outdoor uh, sunlight out the back um, but it's kind of overall very dark uh, so what we need to do is we need to uh, turn a few things on so we're going to do that by going into the render setup and in the render setup I want to click on the indirect illumination tab so render setup indirect illumination tab and I want to make sure that final gather is turned on and then also I'm going to scroll down here a little bit we want to make sure that global illumination is also enabled so once I enable global illumination and I re-render my scene here everything should get a little bit brighter uh, not a whole lot, but it gets a little bit brighter. Uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to um, create a 
portal light and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to close off uh, I'm sorry before we do the portal light uh, I want to do one more thing I want to hit the 8 key which is going to open up the environment tab environment settings so that's the 8 key and it's going to open up the environment and effects tab and what I want to do is I want to under the MR photographic exposure control I want to select a preset here and so I'm going to click on this little tab right here and I want to select the preset uh, I want to use physically based lighting uh, indoor daylight alright so I'm going to do that click on that and you'll notice here that all of a sudden my light got a lot brighter and my scene changed a little bit and I'm going to go ahead and render this out and there we go so what I've done here is I basically uh, turned up the exposure on the daylight system to uh, gather a whole lot more light into my room okay so this looks uh, a lot better now we can actually see the bookshelves we can kind of see everything else but it's also very 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 blown out right now and uh, just kind of hot and really really blown out and probably a, li a little jarring to look at so what I want to do is I want to tweak this a little further okay so what we've done so far is we've just to rehash we've created a daylight system we changed the sunlight type to mental ray sun we changed the skylight type to mental ray sky and then we went into the exposure tab which is if you hit the A key and go into the environment and effects tab which you can also get by going to render uh, environment same thing so rendering environment and then what I did was I selected a preset for MR photographic exposure control under presets here and I selected physically based indoor daylight and what that did is it basically just tweaked our daylight setup um, to push a whole lot more light into my room but things are the quality is kind of a little severe here things don't look so great and the reason for that is because um, currently I have a 3ds max default material on all my objects in my scene and if you remember from the previous video I told you guys that uh, 3ds max is uh, materials are not quite as friendly uh, to mental ray as mental rays materials so I'm going to select all my objects in my scene and I'm going to open up the material editor and I'm going to open up my uh, DMI uh, project mat here that uh, I created previously well apparently my uh, material library got corrupted and uh, so I'm just going to create a new one alright so I'm going to go into the mental ray uh, arc, arc and design material and I'm going to create a new one and I'm going to double click to make the uh, preview here a little bit larger and then I'm going to double click the material to uh, get it into the material attribute editor and I'm going to name this uh, let's see I'm going to call it clay matte basic and so if you remember I told you guys that uh, mental ray lighting likes and prefers mental ray materials so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab my clay material I'm going to change it to a matte finish and then I'm going to assign it to everything in the scene so I have everything in my scene selected geometry wise and I'm going to right click on this material and say assign material to selection and what that's going to do is that's going to now allow my lighting to harmonize uh, more fully with the materials in the scene because now everything is mental ray the lighting is mental ray, the materials are mental ray, and so everyone's kind of speaking the same language. And we can see here it's still kind of burnt out, but we're getting a uh, little bit better quality of light uh, in render. Alright, so next thing I want to talk about is this material and some of its attributes that are going to uh, make your renders a little bit more friendly. Um, the first thing we have to do though before we can do anything is we want to go into the render setup and we want to tweak a few settings we want to 
make sure that final gather is enabled and global illumination is also turned on but we want to turn up the maximum number of photons per sample under the global, global illumination settings. I'm going to change this to something higher say like a thousand and you can turn this all the way up to 10,000 although I don't recommend that um, when you're just trying to uh, get your lighting blocked out and get everything to kind of look correctly it'll really slow down the render time so uh, I like a value of about a thousand for now while we're still kind of setting everything up alright and so we'll render that and you can see the quality gets a little bit better uh, the next thing that I want to do is I want to go into that mental ray material itself and I want to toggle a few settings so I'm going to go into that material and the first of which I want to turn on is under the advanced rendering options and I want to make sure that I turn off back face culling and what that's going to do is that's going to make sure that both sides of all my polygons render um, so that uh, you don't end up with that kind of transparency problem where uh, the surface normals are facing a different direction and so the back sides of objects don't get rendered so that's number one the next thing I want to do and it's probably a good idea to always whenever you're creating a, a material an arc and design uh, mental ray materials just turn that off uh, to begin with uh, it'll slow down your render time a little bit but um, not not too much so it's probably worth it alright and then I'm going to go into the special effects tab and this one is very 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 important I'm going to turn on ambient occlusion and I'm going to clone this excuse me I'm going to clone this render so that I can actually show you the difference alright so I'm going to render this is a clone of the previous render and now I'm going to render this scene again and you can really see the difference in the the shadows so see the shadows there in the bookshelves and then, then the darkness of the corners um, of the walls um, just by turning on ambient occlusion uh, what that does is it kind of helps the renderer darken the areas that are occluded uh, by light alright so the next thing you want to do if you're going to turn that on is turn the number of samples up to something higher like 64 and then also I'm going to turn the max distance up. I'm not really going to explain this just yet. Um, basically this setting uh, is based on the uh, scale of your scene. So a lower value typically is going to make everything brighter and a higher value that's closer to the scale of your scene is going to make everything darker. So I happen to know that my scene here is about the same size as the perspective grid which is in the ballpark of say 20 units um, across. So I'm going to do 20 as my value and then I'm going to go ahead and re-render this and we should see everything get a little bit darker. Okay, much, much better. The overall hotness of the scene is kind of dissipated. You can see the shadows kind of under the couch um, and in the corners everything got a little darker and um, it just looks a whole whole lot more real right now um, than it used to. The next thing you can do though is that you want to think of this value here this ambient occlusion value as a way to kind of uh, give you a threshold to dial up or down the darkness of your shaded areas or your shadows. So for example under the couch right there, if I wanted to make that darker and give that a little bit more contrast, I can actually click on the shadow color on this ambient occlusion node and I can actually just darken this a bit by just dragging the value slider down a little bit and make that probably about twice as dark as it was and then I'm going to re-render that. And you'll see that it kind of has the effect of giving you somewhat of an exposure control um, for you to be able to darken your corners and your shadow regions uh, in your scene kind of interactively without having to worry about uh, tweaking a few thousand settings you just really change the shadow color on uh, 
the ambient occlusion special effect node on your material and check it out. It gets a lot darker, it looks a whole lot more real, uh, it's a lot more pleasing to the eye. All right. All right, so the next thing, this is really starting to look a lot better. The next thing I want to do is I want to show you guys how you can control the exposure of the light in your scene using the um, environment tab. So I'm going to open up the environment tab or you can just hit the A key and it opens up the environment and effects tab. And this exposure value right here is currently set to 10. The way this thing works is the lower the value, the brighter your scene gets. So currently it's at 10. So if I were to take this down to an 8 and I re-render my image, then my image is going to get a whole lot brighter, so it's going to kick a lot more light into my scene. And so if you really wanted to have the effect of kind of like the god light coming from outdoors and really saturating everything, you would want to set this value lower. Uh, honestly, that's probably too low. I just wanted to show you how it worked. It was set to 10. I think a value of 12 is probably going to be pretty decent. I thought 10 was a little hot, so I'm going to take it down to 12. And that looks a little bit better. My highlights are uh, definitely a lot more manageable. Things are no longer getting blown out. But now you'll see that the room is kind of dark. It's kind of dark in the room. So I want to show you another thing that you can do to kind of get more light and more rays into your room uh, bouncing around and giving it just kind of a, a, a better, higher quality overall appearance. And that is uh, the way we're going to do that is we're going to create another type of light, which is a perfect segue for us to uh, get into photometric lights. All right, so the first type of photometric light that we're going to use is under the Create tab, and then it's under the Lights tab, and it is called an MR Sky Portal. So that just uh, stands for Mental Ray Sky Portal. And what a sky portal does is it allows you, I'm going to just go ahead and create one here. You just draw them just like you're creating a, uh, a standard primitive box or plane. And I'm going to move this portal over here to uh, just outside my window. And if I use the perspective camera, I'm just going to come out here and show you where it is in the frame. I'm going to go to uh, wireframe so you can kind of see it. And so this is my sky, mental ray sky portal, and I'm just going to put it right outside the hole in my wall for where my window is. And then the other thing you want to do is you want to make sure this arrow, so this little yellow guy, that's the sky portal, but you want to make sure that that arrow is pointing inward into your room, so into your interior scene. So I'm going to select that guy, and I'm going to go to the modifier tab, and under... Uh, the mental ray sky portal, I'm going to make sure I click on flip light flux direction and now that's going to flip that little vector pointing the light now into my room. All right. And now that I have my mental ray portal light set up, the other thing I want to do is I want to definitely have uh, shadows turned on on this object. And then I'm going to uh, turn back on my shaded view and hopefully you can see here that the light in the room got a little bit brighter overall and we should definitely be able to see that now when I re-render the image and it's subtle but it definitely gives the effect of a much more pleasing and more balanced uh, light input into my room so everything with that addition so it was basically Turning on the, the final gather with the global illumination did it, right? Then turning on the uh, mental ray sun and the mental ray sky gave us an extra boost. And then finally, uh, turning on or creating a mental ray sky portal, which essentially the role of that light is to kind of focus all of the daylight system into that opening in the window and push all of those photons and light rays into our room, thereby kind of brightening up the entire scene and just making it look a lot more realistic. All right, so now I have one more problem. If you'll notice this line right here, and I'm going to go ahead and render this from another vantage point. 
And what that is, is that's the horizon line on the mental ray uh, sky node. And so that's kind of a bad angle. I should have uh, went too far, so I'm going to cancel this. And come down a little bit. I wanted to show you that essentially that gray line is the horizon line. So that gray area there and below is kind of like the ground, and then the white area and above is kind of like the... Uh, the sky, right? So what we want to do is we want to bring this horizon line down. So I'm going to lower it by, I'm just going to let this render out. I'm going to lower that by selecting my skylight or my daylight setup. So I'm going to grab my daylight. I'm going to come over here under the modifier tab and I'm going to change the horizon height for the MR sky advanced parameters. So horizon height and I'm going to give it a negative 2 value and that's going to lower the the ground in that sky skylight and so now when I render this out it's just going to give me the effect of kind of having a nice burned out or washed out background here where the sun's coming in through the window and I don't really get that annoying and obnoxious uh, ground plane line and so now we just have the effect of okay uh, I got my camera set up inside my room and the sun is so so gorgeous out there that it's just kind of blowing out the window I'm not really exposing anything outside of the room all I'm getting is this great great uh, sun drenched window with the sun drenched light coming into my room and that's the effect that I'm looking for uh, with this lighting setup okay Okay, now we've got our, our light uh, set up basically blocked out. What I would, would like to do at this point is um, stop using the perspective camera for my renders and actually create a dedicated render camera. And the way we're going to do that is I'm using the perspective camera right now. Um, and I'm just, I like the, the perspective I have here, so I'm going to clone this camera by selecting the view and I'm going to hit control C which is basically going to clone that perspective view and create a camera based on its settings and so you can see here that my camera went from if I undo I can show you so right here my camera says perspective watch what happens now I select the view and I'm going to hit control C it's going to clone the view and now my perspective window changed from perspective to camera 001 and so what this is is this is actually the viewport from my new camera's vantage point. So I'm going to rename this camera from camera 001 to render cam underscore 01. And then what I like to do if I'm uh, doing kind of advanced rendering and let's say I'm, I'm setting this up to where I might want to keep some of these images uh, is I'm going to change this bottom left hand view here from uh, the left viewport, I'm going to select cameras and I'm going to change this one to the render cam view. And then I'm going to leave this one, I'm going to change this one back to my perspective viewport. Alright, so I have one viewport that's kind of I can navigate and zoom around and look at my objects with. And then I have my render cam, which uh, I can change the vantage point by clicking on the target and moving it and clicking on the camera itself and moving it. But remember I was happy with it completely so I'm going to undo that. And then what I want to do here in this render cam viewport is I want to change it to realistic which gives me a real time updates for my lighting. I'm going to turn off the grid and then I'm going to go to realistic and I also want to enable it to illuminate with scene lights. All right. And what that's going to do for me is this kind of gives me a dedicated view. So I can move this one around and let's say I want to change the materials on stuff. I'm going to select this object here. I'm going to hit F4 to get wireframe on shaded so that I can... Basically my perspective view is kind of like the view that I use to navigate the scene and set things up. And this view is the view that I use to basically just keep the camera stationary and just use this one to render. All right. So now I'm going to maximize my render cam view and I'm going to render that image out just to make sure that everything looks good. Still, and it does. The cool thing about this setup is that by using a dedicated render cam 
I get some advanced settings when, with regards to setting up the lenses uh, for this camera. Uh, just by virtue of it being a targeted camera, it's got a few extra attributes on it that the perspective viewport doesn't have, so I want to show you that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select my render cam and then I'm going to come over here oops, in the modifier tab and check this out. So I have my render cam selected and right here below we have a bunch of presets for stock lenses. So watch what happens when I click this. 15 millimeter. Whoa! Get a very wide, wide angle lens here. I'm going to maximize this viewport now so we can see. So this is kind of nice. We've got these nice photographic presets that are all based on 35 millimeter lenses where I can keep zooming in on my frame uh, kind of without having to change my camera's vantage point. So this is very, very useful. So uh, I kind of like the way that 24 looks. So I'm going to leave it on a 24. I'm going to render it out again. looks pretty good. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to set up my render settings so that I'm rendering this uh, image here at the aspect ratio that I want for my final image. All right. So what I, this is the the height and width ratio that I want all my images to be in. Currently this is set up to default 3 by 4 and it's not really very cinematic. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into my render settings and I'm going to open up the render settings and under the common tab I want to change my output size All right, so output size currently is custom and this happens to be a broad old broadcast 3 by 4 uh, ratio and I'm going to change this to uh, which one do I want to looking for There it is, HDTV video. All right, so HDTV video is basically all the new uh, 16 by 9 um, formats, so widescreen. So for those of you guys who don't know, 3 by 4 refers to this image is 3 units tall and 4 units wide. And 16 by 9, I'm going to switch it to 16 by 9 here, and just go ahead and render it. All of these. Uh, HGTV video or, or 16 by 9 and I'm going to render this one out. 16 by 9 is basically 9 units tall and 16 units wide so it's basically a lot wider than it is tall which gives you a much much more dynamic picture and uh, usually a lot a lot more visual pleasing result, a lot more dynamic look uh, than the generic and uh, outdated uh, 3 by 4 alright so I'm going to go ahead and let this one render Okay, so that rendered and uh, although it looks nice, it's very big. Uh, that's 1280 by 720, so that resolution is uh, pretty sizable. And while we're comping stuff out and, and just getting stuff to look right, we probably don't want to wait that long for our images to render. So what you can do is here under the render setup, you can set it to HTTV video. And what will happen is if you change any one of these uh, width or height values, it's going to lock it so the pixel aspect is locked so if I change this to a width of 720 and I hit enter it's going to automatically change it to 720 by 405 that's the one I kinda like and that's what I recommend so I'm going to re-render this as 720 by 405 and that kinda gets the point across it's high enough resolution that uh, you can see what you're doing but it's going to render uh, a lot faster without kind of breaking the bank basically much 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 faster okay and if you guys are uh, following along with this you probably noticed that you, you were getting some kind of jagginess here on the shadows 
in our scene and that can be uh, resolved by changing uh, these three settings up here. So we have the final gather precision. Uh, this I typically like to leave at draft. Uh, we have the soft shadow precision. Um, this you can leave kind of in the middle. This one is actually pretty important for this. If that's really annoying you, that, that muddiness there on the fringe of the shadow, uh, this value here uh, has the most effect on that, and that's the image precision anti-aliasing. If you crank that up, and I'm just going to render it just to show you, I'm only going to do it once, but I just want to show you. If you crank that value up to uh, kind of the maximum, you're going to get a night, all that noise at the margin of your shadows is going to kind of disappear. Um, and uh, I just want to prove to you that that's going to kind of fix that problem. And then you just log that information for later when you're ready to do a final render. Uh, that's when you would turn all that up. In fact, when you're ready to do your final renders, you're probably going to turn these first three uh, pretty much all the way up to the max. And then uh, go get yourself a cup of coffee or uh, tea or something. and and you know wait 15-20 minutes while your frame renders uh, and then come back and admire it in all of its high quality glory but while you guys are just proofing and working working on stuff really you want to keep all these values uh, pretty low I just wanted to dial this one up to show you that once I did that 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 margin of that shadow actually um, pro improved drastically and it actually looks very very high quality actually the entire image does now now that I've uh, dial that up, but it's at uh, at the expense of a uh, pretty significant uh, render time increase or hit, so um, just know that uh, you can dial that up at the end, but while you're proofing stuff, you probably don't want to mess with that, and uh, yeah, here we go, this has probably been uh, it's not really giving me a time elapsed yet, but uh, that last frame was about 24 seconds, I'm going to let this one finish and then we'll see what the difference is. Okay, so that frame uh, took about three or four times as long to render as the previous one. So, again, I don't recommend uh, turning this up uh, very high until the very end. I usually like to leave all of these here uh, pretty low uh, to start with. And then uh, we uh, will tweak those up higher when we do our final renders. Next thing you may want to do, okay, so. I have my renderer set up to HGTV. Um, you may want to set up your viewport so that it actually displays exactly what their image is going to render. So right now this view is actually kind of lying to me. I'm actually seeing more of the image than the render is actually going to render. And so if I do want to crop this view so that it's only going to show me what the renderer is going to render me, I can click on this little plus button here and go to configure viewports and over here under safe frames I can say show safe frames in active view and say apply and I'm looking for the live area and I'm going to say apply OK and then if I minimize it I don't think it did what I wanted it to okay it did it did do what I wanted it to it's just that the uh, viewport size here actually fit the render size perfectly so I can illustrate if I scale this up you can see here that my view is being cropped in yellow here uh, to the actual render resolution um, it just uh, fooled me because um, it fit in there perfectly and uh, it didn't look like it was cropping it but that's the effect of the show uh, safe frames is it will actually crop the image and show you exactly what your renderer is going to see Okay, so we got a pretty dynamic image here. I'm pretty happy with the lighting quality overall. So that's it for our sunlight setup. The next thing we want to do is we want to start adding some artificial lights on the inside of our room. Um, you know, some like incandescence, fluorescence, uh, etc. Uh, to get kind of more subtle indoor lighting effects. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, I'm going to just basically go and start with all the photometric lights and I want to just kind of cycle through them alright so so far the first photometric light that we've used is the mental ray uh, sky portal the next one we're going to use is the free light so over here under it's all they're all under create lights and then object type we have target light free light and sky portal uh, the target light um, and the free light are pretty much the same. It's just that one 
is targeted, kind of like a target camera. It's got a little node that it looks at, and the other one is free, so it just kind of free rotates. Uh, we're going to use the free uh, lights, so I'm going to go ahead and say free light, and I'm just going to go ahead and create one kind of in the middle of my room here. I think I'll use one, uh, and I'm going to put it kind of like right in front of the uh, coffee table there. And if you'll notice, I'm going to pop over here to my render cam, and you can see here we got this little light, and if I move it around, it's kind of lighting up the, the shadow there on the floor. And so I'm just going to go ahead and render that so we can see the effect of this light in the middle of the room, just kind of, it's going to be right there in the shadow. And we can see here that now we have an artificial light that's kind of competing with the sunlight on the inside of the room. And this one is just a photometric light. Um, and I want to get into the parameters of this photometric light. So the beauty of photometric lights is that you can kind of change them to whatever you need them to be. So this one, by default, I'm going to come over here. Got it selected. Coming over here to the modifier tab is a free light. And then we have templates here. So you can basically select the brightness of your light uh, based on common household light bulbs 40 watt bulb, 60 watt bulb, 75 watt bulb, 100 watt bulb. I'm going to leave this one alone as it is and come back to these later um, because I want to go over to some other uh, parameters. We have shadows. Uh, you can either have shadow maps or ray traced. I actually prefer uh, ray traced uh, for now. So I'm going to say ray trace shadows. I'm going to keep coming down here. Light distribution type. We have uh, photometric web, spotlight, or uniform diffuse. Um, this, these are uh, just different light distribution types. For now, I'm going to leave mine on uniform spherical. And then I'm going to come over here uh, down. We have different, uh, uh, basically, color types for the light. So cool white. Uh, we'll change the color temperature, uh, halogen, uh, halogen cool, mercury, um, all sorts of presets. So they kind of make this, in my opinion, I mean, it's 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 like almost a little bit too easy for you. Um, uh, mm, when I was learning lighting uh, back in the day, uh, none of this information was uh, plugged in for you. You kind of had to figure all this stuff out. Uh, so it's really kind of nice uh, to make it almost uh, so easy that uh, makes me jealous uh, that I didn't uh, start learning this stuff uh, now instead of 20 years ago. Um, all right, so I'm going to just leave this on the regular old uh, default setting of uh, whatever that is, Illuminant uh, D50 white light. And then I'm going to come down here. This is the cool part, real cool part of uh, photometric lights is this guy right down here shape slash area shadows so this light is kinda like a Swiss Army knife currently it's set as a point light so a point light is basically just a, kinda like a naked light bulb so the light is going to emit in all directions equally from a single point we can change this just by changing the light slate to a line and so you can kinda barely see it here but they give me a little line here and I'm going to rotate it so that so that I have the line going to the sides and a line light I should probably actually render each one of those so the first one I rendered was the point light I'm going to clone that view the next one here is a line and so you can change the line length so currently it's pretty long so I'm going to dial this down there and make it a little bit smaller so it's kind of from here to here and I'm going to re-render that and what that's going to basically do is that kind of emulates the shape of a fluorescent tube right? so we can see here the way that it's illuminating that shadow there on the ground is kind of like a fluorescent tube just in a straight line we then have at our disposal a rectangle and so a rectangle is going to kind of emulate uh, the lighting effects from like a softbox uh, if you've ever seen a softbox light uh, on a video set or let's say like a animation table or a uh, 
uh, backlight table for like looking at slides and stuff. Uh, the rectangle light is, is similar to that. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Then we finally have a disc. And so a disc is going to basically emulate uh, light that would come from, say, like a can light, like I have up in, in my ceiling panels right there. In fact, I'm, I'm going to use the disc light uh, here shortly uh, to do those can lights up in the ceiling. Okay, the next one that I'm going to take a look at here is the spherical. And spherical is going to kind of emulate uh, like a light globe. So if you had like a uh, they're uh, referred to as china balls in uh, in studio lighting. Uh, so this is kind of like a china ball uh, type of a light output where it's going to, uh, I believe it tries to to put out almost like a three-dimensional uh, softbox type of a look instead of uh, just a simple point light. Okay, and then finally we have a cylinder and this is going to emulate, you can see here that changes it, it's going to emulate uh, the look of if you had say like a Chinese lantern or something um, a similar effect so what you want to do is when you're setting up your lighting is um, use these different type of area light shapes depending on the type of light you have alright so the most basic one that we could start with is the point light and so I've got a few wall sconces here and so that's the one I'm going to start with I'm going to change this from cylinder back to point light. And I'm going to go ahead and put some light bulbs into these wall sconces and turn them on so that we kind of have some indoor lighting competing with our sunlight. All right, so I'm going to come over here and I'm going to get out of my render cam and into my top ortho and I'm going to select my light and I'm going to move it over here. I want to put one right there inside of that lamp and I'm going to move it right up there inside of the lamp and then what I want to do on this light is I'm going to go into the modifier and I want to make sure that I have right now it's just kind of um, glowing from outside of the lampshade like the lampshade is having almost zero effect on the light itself and so what I want to do is I want to turn on shadows and you can see immediately when I do that check it out We've got those nice shadows. I've got uh, actually, um, it's it's casting very, very, very nice shadows right now. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, this time I'm going to render this from inside of my perspective viewport because I want to get a look at it, just see how it looks. and so very nice but for that light uh, to be cranking out uh, that much output uh, compared to the bright bright sunlight outside I mean this thing would have to be uh, just a tremendous tremendous uh, wattage uh, so what I want to do is I want to turn that light down alright and uh, currently the intensity of the light is kind of hard coded here at this 1500 value but I want to show you kind of like a, a, a cheat or a a simplified way to to uh, change the intensity of the light without having to keep doing calculations and, and plugging in values. If you turn on this little dimmer, so they have this little dimming value, and you change the light's intensity just by uh, scrolling this dimmer down, it's actually very, very, very easy to control. Um, so I'm going to change this down to about 10% of its original intensity and I'm going to re-render my image and though this is not 100 percent technically correct you know we're not doing the math to figure out the lumens or um, uh, the competing um, light intensity it's kind of more intuitive and a little bit more artistic uh, to do it this in, in this manner and so probably you know that lends itself to <laughs> being used with uh, designers and uh, people who are, are not so technical, which uh, I'm also a fan of, uh, especially when it comes to, you know, 
if you're an interior designer and you just want to visualize your scene, you, you really, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to spend, uh, you know, all this time doing math and figuring out uh, wattages of lamps and foot candles and Kelvin and all this kind of stuff. And this little dimmer value just kind of allows us to uh, very quickly uh, plug in a value and get a result. And then if we need to later uh, to tweak it uh, using math, we will. But you know what? Chances are uh, we may not need to. So uh, I'm getting something kind of close to what I'm looking for. I just want a little bit of a light cone there uh, to where the light is turned on. Um, so it looks like a value of about 1% could do it. Okay, there we are. I'm getting something. So I just wanted to show that, you know, the lamp is turned on and we're getting some sort of output. There's a little bit of a shadow there. It's just basically adding a little bit more visual interest and a little bit more depth uh, to my scene. If I want to change the color temperature of the light now, I could do that. I could change it to some of their presets that they have here. Um, let's see here. I kind of like cool white. Go ahead and re-render that at cool white. Okay, and let's say that uh, I've got that tweaked up the way I want, and I just want to clone that lamp over to the other side of my room. All I have to do then is hold down the shift key and drag that light over to my other wall sconce and I'm going to put it right in there. This one I'm going to instance and the reason I would do that is because by making this light an instance of the other what it means is I only have to change the values on one of these lights and the other one is going to inherit the changes. So if you also notice I'm having trouble kind of selecting this light over here and so what I want to do is I want to select it using the uh, the select from scene dialog box here and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say display none and then I'm going to turn on display lights only and so I want to grab that photometric light number one, I grabbed the, the wrong one, there we go and now watch what happens if I change the intensity on this one it's going to change the intensity on both of them and so that is absolutely ideal especially when uh, you're setting a scene up with multiple lights that are kinda clones of the of the others and, um, and so I just took this up to a higher value not necessarily what I want I just wanted to illustrate that uh, both of those lamps are being controlled and instanced off of each other and now casting accurate shadows uh, from one lamp to the other. All right? And then I'm going to dial that back down to the 1% dim that I liked before. Okay, the next thing I want to do is I'm going to come over here into my render camera and I'm going to grab that target and I'm going to move it up a little bit so that I can see my my can lights and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab one of those lights that I've already made and it'll be photometric light number one and I'm going to make a copy of this one so I'm going to hold down the shift key Okay, and then this one I'm actually going to make a copy and I'm going to call this can light 01. I'm going to say OK. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this can light over here inside of my first can light. So I'm moving it to the center and then I'm going to push it up into the ceiling into its little housing. Okay. And then I'm going to change its shape from a point light to a disc. Alright, and then I'm going to change the disc size to match the size of my can. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it down to be flush with the ceiling. Whoops. And I'm going to render it out. And so uh, that's maybe a little bit bright, um, but we can see here, and I also don't like the color, so I'm going to select that, and I'm going to change it. You can also change these colors to uh, whatever you want. So uh, right now it's just using uh, a filter color of, uh, I believe it's the cool white preset here so if I change that you can also filter it yourself so uh, if you don't like what you're getting or you want to give it a tint I believe if I click this and let's just, just do something obnoxious and if I make it pink and I'm going to change my render to region and I don't want to wait for this entire scene to update I just want to render that one light so I'm going to render that out And so that filter is not quite working the way I want it to. Um, so, um, oh, looks like I didn't keep the changes. So let's uh, try that again. Huh. And now it's flaking out on me. Hold on. Okay, so uh, this light um, is not behaving, but what I want to do is I'm just going to clone it. So I kind of have my can lights in the ceiling spread out uh, e very evenly. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to make a copy here, moving my lamp into my other can. And then I'm going to do an instance again. And being that I know that I need about three more of these, four more of these to go across the room, I'm going to do that. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select all of these guys. And I'm going to hold down the shift key again to make a bunch of copies to occupy my other cans. and I'm going to say instance as well on those and now if I go ahead and render my view we should have our can lights in at the very top and they're all in a dimmer so if I dim one the others will dim Okay, cool. I got my can lights in my scene. I'm going to select my render camera and I'm going to. Scene's really starting to slow down now, now that I'm uh, getting quite a few lights in here. And I got two viewports that are uh, basically doing real time lighting. So I'm going to change one of these to no longer render uh, with the realistic lighting. And then I'm going to go to a little bit wider 
angle lens. And then finally, I just want to show you guys that you can uh, use other materials in your scene to do um, unintended uh, effects. So I have a mirror element in here inside of this bookshelf that uh, I want to basically turn into a mirror. And I just want to show you guys that you don't, you want to kind of just get creative with your uh, material choices because um, you can use a mirror in here, but a chrome material is actually also very similar to a mirror. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to assign this mirror with a chrome material. Uh, so I'm going to go in here to Arc and Design and create a new one here. I'm going to double click it. And I'm going to call this one Chrome. And I'm going to go down into my templates and I'm going to select a chrome material. And then I'm going to select my mirror, which I already have selected, and I'm going to right click on this and say assign mirror material to selection. Uh, finally, I want to borrow one of these lights. So I believe this is my original light here. And I'm going to clone this guy to a copy. And I'm going to turn him into a rectangle. And then I want to, oops, I want to rotate this guy to straighten him out. And I'm going to place this light in my scene kind of, I don't really have an element here um, to uh, mask this or anything, so I'm just going to kind of like, you know, this is a phantom light I guess that I'm creating and I just want it to have the effect of kind of like a, uh, a softbox uh, right above my mirror here inside of this little cutout and then this one I'm going to uh, turn it up to something higher like a 10% on the dimmer and really I just want that to be kind of illuminated and then I want that light to show up in uh, my mirror over here, alright? And now would be a great time for me to save my scene. And I'm going to call this guy Room Light Setup 02. And I'm going to save it. And then I'm going to go ahead and render it. Okay, well that took a little bit, uh, little bit to render, but uh, overall it looks pretty good. I recommend that you guys uh, tweak your light values uh, kind of with a gray uh, monochrome and or uh, clay first. Uh, get everything to kind of harmonize light wise and then from there you're going to go ahead and start uh, adding materials. Uh, so to, to come we're going to get into actually uh, adding textures for things like hardwood floors, uh, bedspreads, patterns, uh, things that you cannot do with a solid color. So until next time, uh, I will see you, see you later, and uh, good luck with your projects.